Just kidding, guys. Obviously, the beauty community is not Chuck. But I am here to show you a quick and easy way to have fun with makeup and get a little fearless. Okay, guys. So today I'm going to show you a quick little makeup tutorial. I used to be terrified to try to do my makeup on my own. I didn't think I knew how to do eyeshadow. I don't wear makeup normally because luckily I have very good skin. Um, so I also heard all these beauty rules that made me think that I couldn't do eyeshadow looks because I didn't wear foundation or this or that. So here I'm showing you the brushes I'm gonna be using today. Literally, that's all I use is those five brushes um, on a regular basis. Some of them are from Mac, some of them are just from Walmart, I think. So here I'm gonna contour. I honestly was more scared to contour than anything else. I used to think that I couldn't contour and Part of the problem was that when I would try to contour, I would just do the line and I wouldn't blend it enough. You gotta blend, 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 blend. And you know, I go in quite a bit and contouring really has given me, you know, a way when I'm not having the greatest self-esteem day to kind of feel a little better. Now, I need to totally like, be okay no matter what and I work hard on that self-love I used to have an eating disorder so that's hugely important to me but let's be honest we all have our bad days and on those days I love just to give myself a little contour get a little confidence and go so if anything guys beauty gurus would be shaking by the way I'm contouring my nose right now in fact they'd be shaking at the way I'm contouring my entire face but it works for me. I don't necessarily always contour my nose. A lot of times when I've used all of what I think is on the brush before I go to get some more, I just contour my nose a little bit um, just to add that color so I kind of look like I have a sun-kissed glow, not like I have a bunch of contour all over my face. So like I said, blend, 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 blend. Blending is key. I realize like I can really contour as much as I want and really go in good if I blend it. Um, and that was that was my problem before. I would have like this big wonky looking line. I'd be like, see, I can't contour. Um, with anything when you're doing makeup, you just got to go for it and give it a try. I let fear of trying so many different techniques with makeup keep me from ever doing it. That's why I'm making this tutorial to show you that even if you're not a professional makeup artist or even if you don't do makeup all the time or even if it's not something you're great at, you too can have fun with it and really do whatever you want. So once I'm done contouring, I take a little bit of blush just to blend it together before I start my eyeshadow look so I don't have that just prominent line staring at me. So next, I'm going to start the eyeshadow process. Uh, I am very excited because I am using the Jawbreaker palette from Jeffree Star. I really love his makeup. It's very pigmented and the colors are amazing. So here's the palette. I'm showing it to you. It's beautiful. So I am going to go in and use this really light pink shade as a transition palette. shade. I want to show you the shade I actually used closer up. The shade I used for my transition shade was Good Morning. Um, you know, most of the time I use a more nude transition shade, but I really like this. It blended really well. This is the kind of brush I use. This one's been, you know, not on by my dogs, but it's been disinfected since that. It still works really good. I just use this one side. So the key here, once again, is blending. I know it's going to sound like I'm just repeating myself, but I used to go get my makeup done for a lot of charity events at MAC, and I had the same girl, and I loved her. And she helped me realize that if I blended really, really well, that 
everything would be much easier. And especially with my transition shade, she said, if you blend, 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 then everything else is gonna go down better. Everything's gonna look better. Um, I build up my color really slowly because if I build up slowly, I don't end up with too much product on. And one of the mistakes I used to always make was I would just put a ton of product on my brush and then just put it on and it would look like crap. And I'd be like, why can't I do makeup? I can't do makeup. I'm never doing this again. Um, so I've had to realize that like just to go in really, really slowly, um, dip just my brush in it just slightly and then build. So that's really been key for me is just to put an itty bitty bit of product. Here you see me just dip a little, then a little more, blend, 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 um, and blend some more, and then blend some more, and then just slowly build it up. I do that even with the lightest transition shades because even with transition shades, sometimes I used to, when I first started using transition shades, I would just put a big glob and it would be hard to blend out. So blending is key, but blending can be difficult if you just go in with too much. Putting down a transition shade is so important. It helps make sure that inner crease color and the lid color look smooth and seamless. I used to forget to do that all the time. So building it up for me has been key to not making a bunch of mistakes. I used to get really frustrated when I would try to do my makeup and it would turn out really awful. So here's the second shade I used. It's called Cute um, and it's like a light teal or a mint green almost. When I use colors like this that are super bold or very different and unusual, I always build up slowly. So especially with like greens and blues, intense shades, I like to build up really slowly so I don't end up with way too much on my eyelid and look like I'm straight out of the 80s. So yeah, using a transition shade was a game changer for me. It really pulled my eye looks together. Here I'm putting in that inner corner color. I barely tapped that light green color onto my brush and I'm just putting it there in my inner corner and blending it more. Um, when I use the transition shade, I go up a little higher than where I'm doing this green shade. When I start with the inner corner color, it doesn't go quite up as high. It's really tight into the inner corner of my eye, very much where it like creases. Uh, the second time I dip the brush, I get a little more color than the first. So I get a little more pigment going in, but I don't saturate the brush too much because I don't want to have that 80s look like I was talking about is really easy, especially with colors like this to go just a little too far. Um, and that's one of the most exciting things for me is like, I would never have tried a look like this before. Colors like that terrified me. Now I go for it and I'm not afraid to try um, new colors out or new techniques. Before, I would never allow myself to do makeup because I didn't think that I could use the kind of colors you see beauty gurus or makeup artists use because it looked like big blobs on my eye. And that was mainly because I wasn't taking my time. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a really quick and easy look I'm doing. The entire thing takes me less than five minutes. It's really just about being patient and building up slowly. The last color I used is called Jawbreaker. It's a really hard color to describe. So now I'll build it up slowly on my lids. Um, this is a color that's pretty light. So I end up deciding that I want to get the brush wet even for the less dramatic look that I'm going for. So I slowly build it up on my eyelids, realize that I'd like a little more intensity to the color, and then I decide to wet the brush. Now colors like this that are shimmery 
oftentimes look better wet, but I've never used this shade before. So another thing, when I don't know how a shade performs, I never just go in wet right away. Here I've decided to take some of that green color and go from my inner corner um, up to kind of give more papau to the look. Now I'm going under my eye, but I make a big mistake. I start trying to do it with the blending brush and realize, oh my goodness, no, bad idea. So yeah, that's a common mistake I sometimes used to make was using the wrong brushes for things. So this is a little thing I've watched beauty gurus do for a while now and have been terrified to try, but always thought like, oh my gosh, that looks so great on them. But I thought there's no way I can do that without it looking ridiculous. And so about two weeks ago, I finally decided to give it a shot. I was under the impression like it was going to be impossible to do because I thought you were supposed to like get it on there as tight as you would like colored eyeliner, but that's not the case. It's supposed to be smoked out a little bit under the eye and give a dramatic look. So it's really not something that's as difficult as it seems. Once again, just don't overdo it. Start slow. So I did my mascara off camera, but here's the final look, guys. It's not super dramatic. It's just fun and fresh and flirty, and I really like it. Um, this is just me showing you how easy it can be to really dive into makeup and try it out. I think I'm deciding right here. Hold on. I decide to wet the brush. Oh, this is what you didn't see before. I decide when I see the final look that the lids aren't as dramatic as I'd like them to. And I wet the brush and add that third color um, on their wet for a more dramatic look, which that's the thing. Sometimes you get the whole look done and make that decision. I used to like think I had to make every little decision like right then and go big or go home. And I'd end up with a crazy looking eye look because I put so much on. Now I'm all about go big or go home in most cases, but not in makeup. So now we're officially done with the eye look portion, but we're gonna complete the final look with highlighter. Um, I don't wear foundation, so most of the time when I do makeup, it's contour, blush, highlighter, and a fun little eye look, um, and mascara, obviously. Here I'm using the Jeffree Star new Diamond Wet highlighter. So this is his Supreme Frost um, formula in Diamond Wet, and I really love it. I put it on my cheekbones there, right at the very top. I also put it up there in my brow bone for an extra little lift in my eye look. Um, and I have a tendency to over highlight. So what I do is I do my actual blush very last. I do that little bit of blush after my contour just to blend my contour. Um, but then at the very end, I do my blush so that I can kind of blend out the excessive highlighter and really make it look seamless and not like I have some big streaky highlighter on because no matter what, I seem to um, over highlight. So yeah, there you go, guys. There's the look. I feel pretty. It was easy. I hope opening up about my fears with doing makeup has helped any of you feel a little bit more confident with going out there trying new techniques and colors that you maybe wouldn't have before. So I'm all about self-love and loving yourself no matter what. And you were all beautiful with or without makeup, but it never hurts to feel even a little more pretty. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and go watch my last video because there's a giveaway. Bye guys.